Hey guys, Greg Howe here, S9 Radio. Today we're going to look at a VFO that's been produced to circumvent the notorious phase lock loop PLL issues that plague the Browning Golden Eagle Mark IVs. And this VFO will also greatly expand the stock frequency coverage. So let's start out. We've got a, a working Mark IV here. The phase lock loop is in lock, allowing the radio to transmit, as you can see. And you'll also see it's producing about two and a half watts. This is a client's radio and we're looking into a bird tourmaline dummy load by the way. So this is a client's radio with some rather tired tubes. He didn't want to replace the tubes. He just wanted to get the radio working. So anyways, there we are. About two and a half watts. Now I'm going to go ahead and disconnect the phase lock loop cable here off the PLL circuit and we'll connect the S9 radio custom VFO. Really need two camera people for this. So now we're VFO operated. We're disconnected from the PLL. And you can see we're doing a little bit more power. Just slightly more power than the stock phase lock loop. And just to prove to everybody that yes, um, you can see the channel display illuminating here. I'm going to take the phase lock loop out of lock which will disable the transmitter from transmitting normally. Uh, to install this VFO we've got a, uh, let's put it on channel 20 here, got a jumper that needs to be moved on the bottom of the radio. Involves soldering one wire. Real easy deal. And you can see the phase lock loop going berserk. This normally disables the transmitter from working, but you'll see it's keying up just fine working on the S9 radio VFO, and it's actually putting out more power than a, a properly working phase lock loop on the Browning Mark IV. Hey, pony keg. Hey, how's this Mark IV sounding? These are the, the digital readout ones that uh, notoriously have uh, phase lock loop problems. This one works, but I'm running it on a VFO right now anyways. Sounding okay?